In this video I'm going to be making some alien eggs. So we're going to be doing some sculpting, moulding, casting and painting. Now, as you can see, as well as making sculptures and models, I also collect them. Um, I find these really inspirational, um, something to sort of try and aim towards when I'm making sculptures. Um, so it's really nice to have them in the room as I'm working. Um, and as you can see, I've got quite a few alien sculptures as well. So I was thinking it'd be quite cool to make some alien eggs to go alongside them. Now, these particular ones are made by Hot Toys and the um, alien itself is made by McFarlane Toys. They're both more or less one sixth scale models, so I thought I would try and make some alien eggs to the same scale to go alongside them. I have been meaning to make a full video about my collection actually, so I might get around to that someday, but I find these really inspirational to have in the room. Just gives me a standard and something to aim towards um, in a similar way to the art books that I uh, did a video on a while back. And you may recognize some of my own sculptures in a cabinet over here as well. So I'm going to use this clear plastic egg to use as a base for my sculpture. Now I'm going to be making a mould of this and so I need a flat base to put this on. And as it turns out an old CD is exactly the right size to use so I'm just going to glue that on with a spacer in between to hold that in place. Now my egg is going to have the top open and you'll be able to see the space hugger inside. So what I'm doing is cutting the top of this plastic shape off. And I'm just going to turn it around and glue it in place so that there isn't a large hole in the top of the egg. And finally I'm going to use a few pieces of polystyrene to fill in the base. Right, so now that I've got my armature ready, I can now come in with some monster clay and start to sculpting over it. So what I've done is to put the monster clay in the microwave for a few minutes at low power. And now it's gone pretty goopy, so that's going to let me uncover the entire piece in monster clay. Now what I'm specifically going for here is the egg from Alien Resurrection. Uh, now I'm not a huge fan of Alien Resurrection for obvious reasons, but I think the design work in the film was particularly good. And something that always bugged me from the earlier films was that the lips of the egg always seemed to be really, really thin in comparison to the size of the overall piece. And I don't know if that was due to like, the limitations of the special effects at the time or something like that, but um, in Alien Resurrection they really made an effort to make the eggs very fleshy and organic, and the lips of the eggs were very thick. And I always thought that looked much more realistic uh, given the size of the eggs, so I wanted to do something similar here. So what I'm doing is to cut some guides into my egg and to divide it into four separate sections. So I can now start bending the clay down and this sort of has something of an advantage because you're moving an actual physical object down it does tend to bunch up a, a little bit in the way that flesh might. Um, so you can sort of do that as a first step and then accentuate it by adding additional folds of skin underneath where the skin would have bunched up as the lips open. What I'm also doing is dividing the body of the egg into these curved sections, so that's two per section, so eight overall. So now I'm starting to fill in the top of the egg um, with a view to adding in the face hugger. And what I've got is this uh, miniature face hugger here which came with my McFarlane Alien. So that's a good bit of reference to go with. What I'm doing is just getting the basic shape of the face hugger in place and then coming in with my loop tool and slowly smoothing things out. So now that I've got my face hugger in place, what I now need to do is start adding some goo and some slime to the top of the egg. Um, so what I'm doing is using my wax melter here with some molten monster clay in it. And I'm just spooning some of that molten clay onto the top of the model. The idea here is that it's going to get some sort of organic, uh, natural shapes that I think would be quite difficult to get purely by sculpting alone. Because the clay is molten, it can sort of move and flow a little bit. 
I found that that worked well enough, but it wasn't quite moving quite as uh, well as I would like. So what I thought I could actually do was heat up some of my metal sculpting tools with a blowtorch, and then use them to melt the clay directly and move it about with a little bit more precision than I could manage otherwise. So I found this worked really, really well actually. So what I would do is heat up metal tools with the uh, blowtorch and then just melt the clay into the position that I wanted it. And I found that was quite good for creating some natural sort of organic um, liquid-like patterns. So for the base, what I've done is to put in some sort of uh, random shapes and get them looking as organic as I can. And what I'm now doing is coming in with the blowtorch directly and just melting the clay. Also adding some more molten clay from my wax melter. I also need some skin texture on my egg. So what I'm doing is coming in with this texture stamp that I made a while back. And the way I did this, uh, there's a separate video on my channel actually. And the way I did this was to pour some uh, resin into some orange peel. And that picked up some of the texture from the orange peel. So I can now press that into my sculpture. The texture from that was quite sharp initially, but because I was handling the egg quite a lot, that had the effect of smoothing out that um, texture. So that came out quite nice in the end. What I've also done is to cut in some um, skin wrinkles, just with a sharp uh, sculpting tool. And then finally I've gone over those with some white spirit just to smooth them out. Right, so there we go, there's my finished sculpture. I'm quite happy with the way that looks. So what I'm now doing is coming in to make my mould, so what I'm going to do is glue some cardboard around the bottom. Uh, the idea with this is I'm going to be uh, pouring some silicon over the sculpture, and that's going to slowly drip down as I do it. So what I need is a barrier at the bottom just to catch the silicon so it doesn't start flowing all over the place. I can then reintroduce the silicon to the top of the sculpture, um, and it will slowly dry, and then we'll be left with a layer of silicon all over our sculpture. Now because I've got some quite fine uh, detail in this sculpture, what I'm doing is coming in with an airbrush and I'm just blasting some air through the airbrush to try and push the silicon into the details of the sculpture. And it's really just a question of continuously reintroducing the silicon as it drips down until it's dry. Right, so that's the first layer of silicon done. What I'm now doing is coming in with the second layer. And for this one, I've thickened it up using a Fixotropic agent. So that just makes it much more um, thick and viscous so it doesn't drip quite so much. Because we've picked up the detail of the sculpture in our first pass of silicon, this one is really there just to thicken up the mold so it's nice and thick and won't tear easily. So I'm just pasting this onto the sculpture and I'm taking care to cover any areas where the silicon looks particularly thin. So that's just to try to get a nice even coverage of silicon over the entire model. So now that my silicon is dry, I now need to make a hard case over the sculpture. And the way I would normally do this is to use some fiberglass. And now the components of fiberglass are glass fiber, uh, but you also bind that together using a polyester resin. Now I happen to have uh, run out of polyester resin at the minute, so what I'm using is polyurethane resin uh, with my glass uh, fiber. Um, I sort of tried this a little bit before, but I'm not quite sure how this is going to come out, so this is a bit of an experiment. And that's there just to hold things in place once I remove the sculpture from the silicon. If there's no support, the silicon will be quite floppy. So the uh, case is just there to hold it in place. Um, so it's nice and rigid for when you pour your casting material in. So the polyurethane resin worked well enough with glass fiber. Um, I've got a nice hard case. So I can now free my sculpture from my um, rubber mold. Um, so all I want to do is cut the mold to free the sculpture. When you do this, make sure to cut a bit of a wavy line. That's just so it's very obvious how the two halves of the mold come back together. Once that's come out nice and cleanly, it's always nice that you get to keep your sculpture at the end. Right, so I can now put the silicon back in the jacket, and I'm now mixing up some roto casting resin that I'm going to pour into my mold. Now I've used this stuff before for previous projects, but what you do is pour a small amount into your mould and you start rotating it around and as the resin dries it sticks to the outside edge of the mould and you end up with a nice hollow cast. So this is quite a useful way of making large scale sculptures without using a ton of resin. That stuff I'm using cures pretty quickly so it doesn't take too long to um, get a final cast. 
And as you can see, the resin slowly goes more opaque as it cures. And once it's in its final stages, I tend to just move it about and uh, make sure that I've got an even coverage over the whole of the interior of the mold. That way your cast won't be sort of weak in certain places. Right, so given that half an hour or so to set, I can now take it out of the mold. There we go, looks pretty good. Not distorted or anything, and I can't see any mold lines. There are some air bubbles here and there, and I think that's just partly because it's uh, quite a complicated sculpture where I've got all that organic sort of detail. But I don't think that's really going to notice once this is all painted up. So I can now start painting this and uh, one thing I didn't do was to undercoat this and I probably should actually so I did notice a bit later on that some of my paint was coming away quite easily. But the reason I didn't is because I've only got grey undercoat um, and I wondered if the grey undercoat might make things look too dark once I started adding light colours on top but less than enough for the next time so what I'm doing here is giving a base coat of flesh colour um, obviously this isn't the final colour but because the eggs uh, do look quite fleshy I thought this would be a good place to start I'm also adding in some red at the edges of the lips to again give them a bit more of a organic look that doesn't entirely make sense of course because it does sort of imply that there's red blood flowing around through the um, egg which I wouldn't have thought to be the case but I think this is one of these things they always tend to do in sci-fi. It's like why is the inside of the predator's mouth red when we know the predator's blood is sort of fluorescent green. You know it doesn't really make sense but it's just because the eye reads that sort of thing as being organic which is why they do it I think. So what I'm now doing is coming in with some green to try and give it a bit more of an alien look. And I'm also using some browns to further darken it down as well. Something I find that works particularly well is to use some Games Workshop washes. As I think this one is Fugan Orange. Um, I've often used a Rakeland Flesh Shade as well, but I've run out of that. But those two washes tend to make everything look great once you've given them a few passes. So I tend to find myself using them for pretty much everything. So I'm just using a brush to pick out the finer details of the sculpture, something that I couldn't really get into and do with the airbrush. Right, so there's my painted sculpture and one thing I did off camera was to give this a layer of gloss varnish on the top as well and that's just to make all of the goo and slime really sort of stand out and catch the light. So final thing to really make this look organic is to start adding some latex on top of it. So what I'm going to do is um, just put a layer of latex all over the sculpture and I'm applying this with my finger just so I don't ruin some brushes because it can be quite um, easy to uh, destroy paint brushes by using, uh, using them with latex. Um, in order to dry this I'm just giving it a quick blast with a hairdryer. So now that that's dry, what you can now do is come in and start rubbing it with your finger. And what that will do is to cause the latex to roll up and it starts looking like sort of um, organic desiccated flesh, um, which looks really, really cool on organic sculptures. So it's just a nice way of adding some additional detail to the sculpture and it really does look quite organic. So that worked really well on the body, so what I now want to do is do exactly the same thing onto the top of the sculpture as well. Maybe this one looks a little bit more like sort of slime or goo or something like that. And so there we go, so there's my finished sculpture and as you can see that looks pretty good uh, alongside the models. Now, um, one thing I did think was, well, I've got one type of um, egg, but because I've still got the sculpture, maybe I can make some additional types. Um, so what I did was to uh, redo the sculpture. Uh, and as you can see, I've got another egg here with the face I got on the side of the egg. So it's just crawled out. And I've also done another egg, which is totally closed up. So that's just to add a bit of variety to the display. Because my sculpture came out of the mould um, basically in one piece, it was very easy just to redo it uh, using the sculpture as a base and adding some different detail here and there to add some variation. These were just moulded and cast in precisely the same way and I've painted them up using the same method that you saw previously. The only thing I did differently this time around was use some hot glue to add some additional slime to the eggs which I think looks suitably gross. So that's the end of that one. Uh, it's quite nice to do a uh, relatively simple and easy project compared to some of my other uh, projects that I've done recently. So that's it for this video. Um, thanks very much for watching and I'll see you next time.
Thanks very much for watching. I'll be posting videos on future projects, so if you'd like to keep up with what's going on, please do subscribe. Alternatively, you can visit my website, which is www.thedarkpower.com, or you can find me on Facebook, just search for The Dark Power.